and we are live. Hello, guys. I hope everything is fine with you all. Yeah, so I just been preparing here real quick on all the materials we're gonna use. Um, today we're gonna tie a green parson from a cork collection. A really interesting pad, and uh, to be honest, so I, I tie it because I wanna fish with it uh, this summer. So I hope you're gonna enjoy the video. So let's put the focus towards uh, the hook then. So let's see. Somewhere there, I think the focus will be. There we are. So it's gonna look okay when we start tying. Uh, so let's add the thread to the hook. There we are. Not really. I want to have. I think that's better. Now we guys see it. Um, so we're gonna have extra small silver tinsel. So let me just tie that one in. Hi, Monty. How are you? Just securing that tin cell and I tie in a bit longer than I normally do because it's going to be a fishing fly. There we go. Oh, yeah, right. Tail, we need to prepare a tail after, but first, we're going to have a red uh, silk. Hi, Graham. Graham, how are you, mate? So let's tie in the red silk here. And I just tie in the whole part uh, in the front, making it strong. So I just untwist the silk. This uh, brand is a bit twisted, so I just untwist it, tie it wrapped backwards. I need to sort out that rambling noise, my bobbin. So, and then just secure the silk a bit forward. Yeah, so I thought I was able to color feathers today, Graham, uh, but <laughs> my, my wife's daughter and our grandkid is uh, at home, so I don't want to poison the whole uh, apartment, so I have to do it in the week instead. So I just tie up a bit here uh, to level up the the body before we attach the tail. Oops, fighting with the hook. So let's prepare a tail. I don't like it zooming out and in. Maybe I need more light or something. 
Let me sort that out one second, guys. Now we have a, a better, let's see if I can move closer. No, I cannot. So that is somehow the distance. Okay, let's work with that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna prepare a tail. Uh, I forgot to do that in advance. And I think this one only have a long one, so. Let's have a look what we got here. <clears throat> this bird is really interesting because <laughs> the fibers are longer in the front than in the back so it gives a bit strange look to it however i just cut them a bit Then we have a tail. So I'm just going to clean up, cut all the fibers we don't want there. So I just cut the fibers, I don't rip them off. We do that on everything. Some backs to the thread. One fiber left there. I think you're gonna make it a bit lower. There we go. That looks better. So I'm gonna tie in quite a lot of the tail. Yeah, like half, something like that. And going back where we started. So first I'm going to put on some Indian crew. I did some substitutes that I put in a good spot. There it is. So actually it's the lower part of the pitta. Some more bags.
because I'm gonna lay as I want. So I'm gonna retry. Evil feather. Maybe, maybe I'll. That will work. So on top of that, we're gonna have, uh, let me read the tip patch teal effect. So just gonna cut the small section here. There we go. And then on the other side as well. So I think I'm gonna put the pipettes on first and then the teal on top of that. Uh, just to see if I can get some form of structure. Yeah. Everything is just gonna be blended mess anyhow, but yeah. So tying in the tip bits, same here, just tying it properly. And then just cut the leftovers. And then we have the teal. So just gonna put that on top of it. Now tie in everything. So. That looks okay. Um, black ostrich hurl. I'm gonna use a leftover from when I've done the, the, the butts earlier. Lost it. <laughs> so let's tie this one in then. Secured. The same here, I tie it in a few turns. And then back again with the thread. There we go. So now it's tinsel time. 
and first attach the oval pin cell, uh, silver. There we are. And I tie everything in. And then back again, and then we're going to add the, the, the flat tin cell, also silver. Securing everything and then go back. Oh, actually, I don't need to go back. I think uh, one third should be light orange floss. I will say that's one third, maybe there, and not floss. I call it silk, otherwise, pe people are selling some plastic garbage they call floss uh, i use always proper silk and this pattern is a bit odd uh, it has the uh, body hackle starting from fourth uh, wrap of, uh, of tinsel I just need to figure that one out. Just having a look in the chat. Uh, don't be shy, ask questions if you have something on your mind. There we go. And you're securing that silk. And then the rest of the body is going to be a green pico curl. So I'm going to attach that as well. Let's see if we can move it closer. Yeah, now we, when we have some materials on, it's easier for the camera to zoom. And my setup is, uh, I'm, I'm uh, filming with an iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max uh, through my computer and then towards YouTube. Hi, David. Hi Arnold. I love Netherlands, Arnold. I've been working there um, a lot. Uh, great country to uh, do work in, I must say. Friendly, nice uh, uh, people. I was a bit uh, like a lot in Eindhoven and Utrecht. So that one I can put away. And I just need to tie this one in. All right. I want 
them to be underneath. Come on, there we go. And I'm going to estimate that the fourth turn is somewhere here, meaning I tie in the golden olive hackle. There we go. This pattern is on page uh, 686. And for you guys wondering, uh, uh, page or what, uh, it's in the, the Cork collection. Uh, I got the PDF, a big one. Uh, so I share it via a link. Uh, I have like a cloud location on Gmail. So if you guys want a copy of it, uh, let me know on Messenger, because otherwise I will never uh, remember it. And then I can share the link and you can download it yourself. So let's start to build the rest then. Uh, so we're gonna use this lovely herb. And this is one of the things making me want to add this fly to my time box. I like pico curls. It's always a challenge to have a hackle in the way. I need to see, I need to tie in a few more. So back again with the thread. Hopefully I can manage that. There we go. So I'm just going to cut these two and then add two more. So now it's going to be a bit tricky. I'm going to cut the, <laughs> the right materials. There we go. And the other one is just going to disappear later. When I start to wind the new hurls, they'll be quite short. My dog is already complaining about me tying flies. <laughs> Fantastic. So, don't turn on me. So I'm going to tie them in again. Trying to just remove that material. There we go. So just one, two. Let me see if I can do like that. Yeah, that's easier. Sorry for blocking. I'm just going to cut the... Uh, Peacock curl there. 
so get the yeah the stems in the front away. So you're welcome, David. turn there there we go come on and it's secured so I just do a few reps with the thread then it's time for the tin cell I'm gonna start with the flat tin cell. that one in I'm gonna leave it I don't cut it off until I'm done with the, this one so we're just gonna follow that tinsel forward This heckle is in the way every second of the time. <laughs> So I'm just gonna have a look. Yeah, it's okay. I got some hole in between. It doesn't really matter. It's not the frame fly, so. Let's live with it. It's gonna be busted up anyhow. So, time for the hack kill. And I'm using hen today, because uh, that's what I have in a, in a nice length of, um, uh, yeah, this color. And all the, since I have a company I can buy from the suppliers, right? Uh, not the shops. But the, there's nobody having any any feathers at all uh, at home. It's just completely empty all over the place. I'm not sure if that is something uh, due to COVID before, but they most likely killed all the birds and everything just to yeah make sure they they wasn't the one spreading the virus there's no golden pheasant no no skins no heads no no necks no cock necks nothing just completely dry 
strong tackle. Yay. Yay. And I did find a decent size one. So I'm just thinking, yeah, that's going to be good. First of all, I is going to wax the thread before we tie that one in. I'm sure if you did see the, the picture of uh, the thunder and lightning I did and uh, the yay really popped uh, on the picture. It wasn't really visible when I was tying in the video. And there we go. Yeah, you got the same issue, yeah. I think it's a global thing because nothing is coming out from China yeah. currently. So maybe they forced everybody to kill their, their whole stock of birds and so on. Because all the golden pheasants are normally coming there from China, I think. And that's efficient because now the stem is going big and I did, don't split the stem on fishing flies because uh, I want them to be as robust as possible. Pretty long hackle, I would say. So that was a nice yay. And now to the fun part. Because <laughs> we have the breast feather and the, uh, what's it called? Uh, no, the rump feather and the breast feather uh, of the golden pheasant. And the funny thing is they, they're going to lie flat. So that uh, was uh, really catching my eye when uh, I was reading the pattern. I like uh, different things. So I just remove all the soft and gray feathers here. So first gonna tie in the rump. Like that. And then we have the breast feather. Just doing the same with that one. And then to even more interesting thing, because now we're going to add a topping, two toppings above here. And then above the topping, we're going to have the wing. <laughs> So let me find two rather short toppings. Yeah, but this is this one is decent. That one as well. Only two. Yeah, two toppings. Of course you can add more, but It's going to straighten them a little bit because they just from the head. Yeah, all the materials is crappy as hell as well. 
completely agree. But it's a bit scary because we we really depending on uh, being able to find uh, you know golden fast sand and so on. And if that's completely gone, then uh, yeah, what will we be tying on? I will just push it into place. One topping on. Ah, everything attached to skin. Okay. That, that's not really funny because who want to buy, you know, a cock hackles in a, in a bag? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so let's see what we can do about that. Um, yeah, I think we have to live with it, but it doesn't sound uh, that fun. Just imagine buying like 100 toppings and you get it in a bag and they they all curled up and twisted and, you know, just a mess. So, topping number two then. These messy feathers. There we go. And there we go. That's okay. So now to uh, we're gonna build the wing. Feels strange. It looks done. <laughs> Strong hackles. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Just gonna have a look so I don't uh, miss anything in the chat. Oh, hi, Rich. Sorry, I, I didn't see you, you was joining. I hope you're great, man. Okay, no skins. Yeah, I guess I guess we have to live with that then. Um, it might be for the best in the long run, but uh, as a fly tire. It feels really depressing, I must say. So uh, I'm cutting peacock wing, and then I just realized I took a, a bit too little because you want to have a big slab, slab of um, uh, the dark colors because they are the one building the wing. And then on the light color, you just go with uh, like, one or two fibers. I'm gonna go with two because I'm using a swan on this one. They are they are quite thin, so it doesn't build that much. So we're gonna take a wide section on this one as well. So, peacock wing done, then we need to have 
some golden pheasant tail. The same here, you can have quite a lot. Uh, but I think I'm going to be a bit uh, restrictive and take like a, yeah, five fibers. This is going to be too much material in the wing. Yeah, that would be something. I live in an apartment, so for me it would be <laughs> a bit hard. But uh, yeah, hopefully somebody is uh, starting to breed them in a, in a large number. So we have the peacock wing, the golden pheasant tail, and on top of that, let me just read, tip it in strands, so that's cool. Uh, we're gonna have uh, green, orange, yellow, and blue. So I start with the blue. And as I mentioned, I just gonna take two, like two fibers. Two fibers on each side. This one was short, so I take from below here. So what I normally do, but, uh, I, I marry the fibers together and then uh, then I have the colored feathers on the inside, and then on the outside I put the the, the darker color feathers, uh, and then I brush it uh, towards the, the front, and then to the back, and then I tie it in. That's how I do it. I don't say it's right, but uh, that, that's how I do it. And you, you might have your own way. It might be better. So even if I take two strands only per, per uh, color and side, uh, it's still going to be very, very visible in the wing. So less is more, I would say. And the green should... Uh, of course, be a parrot, but uh, my green parrot is, you know, like a few centimeters in best cases. Hi, Gary. How are you, buddy? And let's see. Yeah, the orange is decent. There we go. And then two strands on the other side as well. I think that's one. Let's add another one because it was so thin. Cutting the stem there, and it's e easier to manage in the banks. I'm gonna take some green swan instead of the parrot. The same here, just two fibers. Yeah, it might be three. They're really, really thin, so I think that's okay.
So there we go. All the calories on the table. Perfect. This one we can throw out. I'm just going to prepare it and tip it in strand. Strands, not strand. Make some Swedish words in it. Just to make it a, a daily challenge for you guys. So, I'm going to tie in the tippet first. Normally, I just add everything in a big bunch and just, yeah, brush it out. Oh, I can hear the, the spring birds are singing. That's a lovely sign that last night we had a storm with the snow. Yes, it wasn't that nice, but spring is almost here. It's so now the tricky part to just uh, Put the feathers on top of each other. There we are. So I'll tip it in strands. So I'm just going to tie them in on top. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny one, eh? but I, I'm going to leave it like that and uh, then, uh, you know, the rest is uh, going to push that down. So let me see, green uh, first. Then we're going to have orange. There we go. So you're just going to marry them. Orange, we're going to have yellow. This one was funny. It's okay. And then the blue. And then I do the same on the other side. <clears throat> For me, I, I think it's easier to manage uh, the feathers this way. Else, you know, if you stack everything loose, then uh, yeah, it's harder. So then I just put color towards color. There we are. Just match them up lengthwise. So there we are. And then I'm going to add peacock wing. The other side, the peacock wing as well. And then we're going to take the pheasant tail. Doing the same with that one. Uh, 
And the same on this side. Well, it's a decent match. And I'm just gonna brush out in the front here first, mix a bit, and then just compact it and hold it and then brush it the whole way out. There we go. That's funny. Now everything is pressing downwards. Then what's left here is uh, mallard. So that's gonna fill out the bit of the wing. It's gonna look nice when, when blended. Yeah, and th that fiber will stop pointing upwards. So let me just cut all the stems here first. We start to add some mallard, and we're gonna have. Oh, yeah, it was the blue and red Macau and uh, horns on this one, and then it's a wool head. See. A lot of things going on in this pattern, I would say. Yeah, that's all the stems. Just cleaning up here. And then let's add some mallard. That's gonna read so I don't miss anything. No, mallard. Cool. So I just take like a wide section like that. And then I just reshape it. Then you have the angle you look for. And I'm gonna add one side at a time. And then I just brush it uh, in the back. I'm getting tired of this, this strand. There we go. <laughs> and then mallet on the other side as well. Then I can show what I mean because uh, I don't I don't brush the mallet from from uh, the start out. So I go from like the middle and then out. Okay. 
So let me just tie this one in then. Might even cut it because the stem got very tight there. So there you see the mallard on. So what I mean with the brushing is that I will start like here and then brush that piece out. Then you get a nicer look. Really long, yay. This is down to like here. Yeah, uh, I'm impressed. So uh, let me get the Macau and also black wool. Yeah, sal saliva, Daryl. That's that's the good, good stuff. <laughs> But uh, I think this one looks really fishy. I like it. Might brush a bit more on this side. Just to make it look a bit nicer. Yeah, something like that. The topping is being pressed down, of course, but uh, that that will solve itself in the water. Oh, this this strand is making me, you know, wanna go and get some dynamite and blow this one up. gonna stop fiddling with the with the fly and just go and get the materials I need but first I just gonna cut off and uh, this stem here there we go don't you dare I, sorry I got tired of this one that fiber has to go and then I there we go Time to get this stuff. No red. So, so, so. And then the black bull, one second. Yeah, uh, the mallard is really, it's really nice material for the mixed wing flies because it's re it really blends in and, and make the fly, you know, lo look 10 times better than without mallard. It's same with, you know, if you have buried wood deck on the sides and then you brush it from the middle and out and then you get all that, uh, uh, contrast in it is just lovely. So, black wool, there we are. Let's see if we have any nice length fibers here. a bit dry but that's okay it's gonna swim in the water anyhow I think it's just one strand yeah, it doesn't stay so it's one it's 
me to find a long one on the other side. There we go. It's pretty fun tying all these uh, fishy flies because uh, now the focus are fish, the fishing season. Just gonna wax the thread. Let me tie this one in. bit more wax to the thread and then let's add the other side as well just gonna curve this one a bit it's too straight Too long. Now let's just turn the this one up. There we go. That's the wrong way. There we go. Ah, not happy with it. Never on. I don't like horns. <laughs> now it's better. So I'm just gonna cut this one off. That one is gone already. I'm just gonna add a layer of. Uh, wax thread and then we uh, go with uh, uh, the black wool. Yeah, that's fishy. So I'm gonna back the thread and do like two, three turns to secure it. This one is a proper fishing fly. Material tied in strong. Later, I'm just going to add a bit of varnish there uh, to secure the thread. Ooh, there we are. Green Parson, Cork Collection, rough and fishy. So, hi guys.
that's it for today, really. Um, I'm going to see and plan uh, for the next week, uh, depending on. Um, I think yeah, on Monday I start on call duty, but uh, that's never a problem. Normally I, I tie flies anyhow, and uh, just uh, uh, if, if I get the call, I just have to, to uh, stop the video and pick it up another time. So no worries. I'm just reading out, out uh, yeah, reading the chat. Oh, hi, Carlo. Sorry, I was in my time soon, so I didn't see your, uh, see your message. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, I wish you a, a nice rest of uh, the Sunday. For me, it's the afternoon. For you guys in the US and Canada, it's uh, in the morning. Uh, and then we have a lovely work week again, yeah? But after work, it's fun. So next week, I'm going to see uh, which kind of patterns. I think uh, I'm going to tie another trap on because I have a pattern that uh, someone is waiting for. Uh, so, so I need to tie it so I can send uh, the fly away. Uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, bye.